Hi everybody, here we are at the John Adams birthplace in Quincy, Massachusetts. Now, John Adams was the second president of the United States. He was born in this very house right here on October 30th of 1735, and he died on July the 4th of 1826. He was the first vice president, of course, under George Washington, and he was one of the founding fathers. Now, his son, John Quincy Adams, get this, was born in the very house next door. Look over here. Now, he was born in this very house here, on July the 11th of 1767 and he died on February 23rd of 1848 at the age of 80. Not quite as long as his father but not bad. Now he was president of the United States from 1825 till 1829 and his father was 1797 till 1801 so neither one won a second term but John Quincy was more known for what he did before president. He was considered one of the greatest Secretary of State and diplomats of all time. As Secretary of State he helped draft Monroe Doctrine he helped negotiate with Spain over the annexation of Florida, and he helped with Britain negotiating the Canadian border. Now, there are some interesting coincidences. As I mentioned, on July the 4th of 1826, that was when President Adams died. It was also the day that President Thomas Jefferson died. He was born in April 13th of 1743, so he was 83 years old, but that was the US's 50th birthday, so that means on the U.S.'s 50th birthday, both presidents died, second and third, isn't that quite the coincidence? But they don't end there. Get this. On July the 4th of 1826, that was the date of birth of Stephen Foster, who just happened to be the writer of the song, Swanee River. But he didn't live quite as long as the aforementioned men. He died on January 13th of 1864, at the ripe old age of 37. Heck, I'm 10 years older than that. But the coincidences don't end there. Now, interestingly enough, the father and son combination, the Adamses were the first one, the second one was the Bushes, George Bush and George W. Bush. So isn't it interesting that both father and son combinations had the same first name and they had to distinguish them by giving the son the middle initial, John Q or John Quincy Adams and George W. Bush. And of course, the coincidences also don't end there because there were six presidents who lived past the age of 90. John Adams, Herbert Hoover, George Bush, Jimmy Carter, Ronald Reagan, and Gerald Ford. Interestingly enough that the two father and son presidents the father will live past the age of 90. Now, as I mentioned earlier, John Quincy Adams died at 80, but right now, George Bush Jr., George W. Bush, is still alive at the age of 70, and we'll see how long he lasts. Now, one other interesting little thing I should mention is that, by coincidence, we always think of George Bush Sr. as being from Texas, but he was actually born just down the road, 10 minutes down the road, in Milton, Massachusetts. And he actually moved his family to Texas after studying at Yale in 1948, and he became a millionaire, or even higher than that, if you want to call that, at the age of 40. But that's where the coincidence ends because as we all know, George Bush Jr. won a second term and George Bush Sr. did not. So that was not the same case with both father and son combinations. Okay, so we hope you've enjoyed this interesting little tidbit of the Adams birthplaces and we are not allowed to take any pictures or videos on the home, so there you go.